Hello everyone. Welcome to another one of our online plant-based cooking classes. My name is Melissa. I'm HealthAware's registered dietitian and personal trainer. I'm very happy to be here cooking with you today. Um, I'm very excited for today's recipes. Today we will be making a vegan potato salad and vegan ginger molasses cookies, which are actually one of my favorite recipes. Uh, just a disclaimer, my, without going into it, long story short, my cats actually need to be in this kitchen room with me today. Usually I lock them out so they don't interfere. Um, so if they interfere, I apologize in advance. They are sleeping right now in their little cardboard boxes. <laughs> So, hopefully they will stay happily asleep while we are here in class. Um, before we begin, I'm going to paste the recipes for today into the comments section of today's video. So give me just a moment. So I did send out the recipes in an email this morning if you are on our email list, you will have gotten those. If you are not on our email list, of course, then you will not have gotten those emails. So I want to make sure that you have the recipes available to you easily right here in this video. So the first one is posted, the potato salad is up, and then our second one, is our cookie recipe. I haven't figured out really a better way to do this, so there we go. We're up and running now. All right, so let's get started. Our first recipe that we're going to do is actually the cookie recipe. We'll be doing the vegan ginger molasses cookies. Um, Timing-wise, it works out better this way so we can kind of get the full process of everything. Our first step for this recipe is to preheat the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We preheat to 350, just like that, click of two buttons. So our oven is preheating and now we can continue on with the recipe. So first, next, not first, second, I guess. Second, we get our baking sheet prepared. So I'm just gonna do a small one right now so you don't stand and watch me make a whole bunch of cookies. Um, so we'll just put a few on this one. I use parchment paper on top. I also want to mention the type of cookie sheets that I use that I prefer for these cookies in particular and for just cookies in general. Um, this is an air bake type of um, cookie sheet. So it has a little bit of a different bottom to it. It's sort of a different kind of thickness. Okay. And I find that I get the best results with this type of cookie sheet. If you don't have one, that's fine. Make, make the cookies on whatever baking sheet you have, but I find that the results look the best on this kind. Okay. So we've got that one ready to go. Now we can start on our batter. So our first step with the ingredients will be to do the dry portion. I have so many things out. Okay, I've got a bowl, it's kind of small, hopefully it will fit everything. And we're going to start with our flour. I didn't pre-measure this one because I wanted you to be able to see how I measure flour to get the most accurate. So I use a spoon to scoop the flour into our measuring cup. You've probably heard about that before, that that's the best method rather than just sticking your scoop into the flour. So I scoop the flour in and then gently just sort of level it off with my spoon. Some people will use a knife, the back of a knife, okay? So we're doing two and a half cups of this. I don't sift this flour in this recipe. I instead, you'll see in the directions that it is whisking. It, I don't find it super necessary to sift for these cookies. Maybe if we were making um, 
a cake, <laughs> but we're not. So that was two cups. And then we have a half cup as well. So we're doing our half cup to get that two and a half cups. Oh, not two and a half. No one stopped me. We're doing two cups and two tablespoons. Holy smokes, we would have had a, a problem there. Okay, so this is a, where's my teaspoon? This is a teaspoon. Whew, that was a close call. We're doing just two teaspoons. I am just scooping this on this one's okay. It's a very small amount. So two teaspoons in, there we go. That was close. Flour is in. And then we're gonna add the rest of our dry ingredients. So next would be our baking soda. We are doing a teaspoon of this one, just regular baking soda. Not powder, make sure it's baking soda, okay? Baking powder in, or baking soda in. I don't know, my brain. Next, we're gonna do the ground ginger. That's what I have here. These are ginger molasses cookies. We're doing a full teaspoon of the ground ginger. That's good enough. So you can do more ginger. Whoops. I'm a bit of a mess, aren't I? You can do more ginger. Uh, it tastes nice to have more ginger if you really like ginger, but it actually gets a little bit spicy um, if you add more than a teaspoon. So be aware of that. If the cookies are spicy, it's from the ginger. Next, we're doing our ground cinnamon. So we're doing a half teaspoon of this one. There we go. Next, we have our cloves. That's this guy. Some people don't like cloves. I know my mother-in-law really does not like cloves but it is traditional into these cookies. So, uh, then finally we're doing our salt into the dry mixture. We're doing a quarter teaspoon of salt, just regular good old table salt into there. Actually, I need this for later. I'll save that one. As I said, we don't sift. We're just gonna whisk together these ingredients. You wanna make sure that they are fully incorporated, so no large sections of any of the spices. Make sure that you get it fully incorporated throughout. Okay, good. So we'll save our whisk, set that aside. Hopefully I have enough room. And next we're gonna do the wet ingredients. For the wet ingredients, we're gonna start with our oil. I use avocado oil, that's my favorite one. Uh, some other neutral flavored oil would be fine. Canola or sunflower, I've used both to make these cookies. So we're doing a full half cup. There we go. There's our half cup of oil. Try not to make a mess. I'm gonna put the lid on so I don't spill. And then our other liquid ingredients, we have molasses. This is the molasses I have, nothing special. I'm pretty sure I got it at Target even maybe, Target, Vons, they'll all have it. So we'll do a quarter cup of this one. Now I will say, usually I like to do the milk first because I use the same measure and it is easier. Hope I have enough molasses. It's, it's easier to get the molasses back out of the measuring spoon after you've already put the milk in it. It gives it kind of a, uh, a little coating because the molasses is of course quite sticky. We have exactly enough for our quarter cup. There we go. And we add that into our mixture. And then next we will do the milk. 
is a messy ingredient. There we go. You know, I'm gonna put that in the sink. I just know that one was gonna fall while I'm talking to you. Oh, our oven's preheated already. We're a little slow, I guess. So this is the milk. I'm using unsweetened almond milk. You could use soy milk uh, if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Just some form of plant-based milk. Put on into there. Then we have our teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm just using the Trader Joe's. It's bourbon vanilla extract, actually. But any pure vanilla extract would be ideal, not the... Um, the, what am I trying to think of? The non-pure, <laughs> what am I trying to think of? What's the word for that? Artificial, thank you. The imitation uh, vanilla extract. I like using pure. So there we go. We've got that one in. And then we add our sugar. So I just use regular granulated sugar. I think this one is organic cane sugar. I got it from Target. I often use the Trader Joe's version of sugar. So we need a full cup of this one. I guess I need to use this one. We will use a full cup. Very carefully pouring. A little bit more. Once we get all of these ingredients into the bowl, We'll then just whisk it all together. So, I think I already said this, but this is one of my favorite recipes to bake. Uh, I have made it, I don't even know how many times I've made these cookies. I have made them for many, many occasions. I've taken them to a Thanksgiving potluck before, um, people's birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Um, they also travel very well. So in the mail, I have mailed these cookies numerous times, um, packaged up in a box. They ship well. So they last several, several days. Whoops. So this is our liquid mixture. We've got it all mixed up. Then we're going to add it into our dry. Carefully. I would recommend using a slightly larger bowl than I'm using, but I only have a limited number of clear bowls and I needed the bigger one for our next recipe. So, let me get these guys out of our way. Oops, okay. I don't whisk this. I use a large spoon to stir this all together. Just getting it all incorporated. It will be a decently wet dough, but that is why we, oops, that is why in the instructions, you'll see that you do need to refrigerate it for 10 minutes. You could do it for a little bit longer. I would say at least 10 minutes. It will help when you are rolling these cookies in the sugar, which we will do after we refrigerate our dough and it helps them keep a bit of a better shape when you bake them. So there we have it all mixed. This is what our dough looks like. So it is decently soft. Okay. Just gonna scrape this off. I usually cover my dough with a sheet of plastic wrap just to keep any refrigerator smells out of our cookies, of course. So a quick cover. We'll pop this into the fridge while we make our potato salad. Into the fridge. So we'll get that chilling, move all of our cookie ingredients out of the way, and we'll get started on our potato salad while that is chilling. And I do have some already made cookies, so don't worry, we won't have to sit here and wait for that batch to bake. I already have some 
but you'll get to see those at the end. Okay. So far we're having really good luck with the cats. They haven't woken up yet. <laughs> They've shifted positions, which makes me nervous, but they haven't woken up. Get that out of our way. Cookie scoop for later. Okay, now we're ready for the potato salad. <sighs> for the potato salad, the first direction that you'll need to do is to cook the potatoes, of course. I have already gone ahead and done that for you, so we don't have to sit here and wait for potatoes to boil and cook. Um, I prefer to pre-cut the potatoes before boiling them. Some recipes for potato salad, you'll see you put the entire potato into the water and boil and then you cut afterwards. I find that they cook uh, much more uniformly and much more thoroughly if they're already pre-cut. I do also leave the skin on the potatoes. I like that texture that it provides. If you don't like the skin on the potatoes, you're more than welcome to take it off. Uh, it does have more nutrients in it, more fiber. If you're interested in that sort of thing, let me grab my potatoes. I just baked them or cooked them this morning so they are cooled now. I have them waiting here for me and I'll show you. The size isn't super important to get it exactly three quarter inch. It's just a rough guide. Um, Cut them as best as you can in a uniform size though. So you don't want pieces that are way bigger or way smaller. You want them all to be, let's see if you can see those, about the same size. And I'm sure we all have our own potato salad preferences. So if you prefer larger versus smaller, uh, vice versa size of potatoes, you go ahead and cut your potatoes however you want. This is just what's worked best for me. We've got our bowl and then all of our ingredients. The potatoes are just gonna wait over here while we make the rest of the potato salad. I think I'll actually put them behind me actually. And this one, you do need a small blender or something to make the creamy part that goes along with this potato salad, which I have waiting for us as well. Someone had a question. Is it better to steam the potatoes or about the same as boiling? Uh, I think it's easier to boil them personally. Uh, number one, a, a steaming requires an extra piece of equipment, the steaming basket, which not everybody may have. I find that boiling works well. They um, Sometimes I find with steaming that the potatoes fall apart a little bit more. They'll stick to the steam basket and in potato salad, we don't necessarily want a bunch of crumbled up potato pieces. So I prefer boiling. As you can see, they stay decently well together. Um, that's my preference, okay? Get the rest of our equipment. Thank you for the question, by the way. Feel free to ask more questions. First thing we're going to do is add some of our ingredients into our bowl and then we'll make our sauce and then we'll add our potatoes. <laughs> First thing we're going to do, now I don't like onion, so for this recipe for me, I'm doing a half cup of celery plus another half cup of celery. If you like raw onion, you can do half cup of onion and half cup of celery, but we're making this for me in my house. so. Celery is what we do. I have the full cup there. Next, we're doing the pickles. I have made this a couple different ways and I find that having the pickles, it just makes it taste more like regular potato salad. I have tried replacing it with um, dried dill, which tastes, tastes good, uh, but there's just a certain flavor that comes from the pickles that makes it more like a traditional tasting um, potato salad. So. Let me show you actually the sizes of these so you can get an idea of how big I am cutting my pieces. I try to cut the everything about the same size here, the celery or onion, 
um, and pickles. I don't know if you can tell how big those are. About that big, pretty small little pieces. Then we're going to add in actually pickle brine. If you didn't want to add this in, that's totally fine. It does give a nice flavor and I actually, uh, I find that the extra moisture makes it much more like a potato salad. So we're doing one and a half tablespoons. This is a half tablespoon measure. So I'm going to do three of these. There's one and two and three into, that sounds a little into there. Then we're also doing a yellow mustard. You can also use Dijon mustard if you prefer a full tablespoon of this one. Tablespoon, doesn't have to be too exact. We're okay with that. I'll use this guy. That goes into our bowl. Then we have, gonna mess on me, celery seed and salt. Make sure if you are going out to buy celery seed, make sure you buy celery seed and not celery salt. There are both in the store. So obviously the celery salt contains salt, which would mess up the ratio, the amounts that we are putting in. So I use celery seed so that it doesn't affect anything. Quarter teaspoon is going in. And then we're doing a quarter teaspoon as well of our salt. There we go. Just gonna give this a little stir to get this part mixed together. And then it doesn't look like much right now. Then we're going to make the rest of the sauce. So you could use mayonnaise if you have vegan mayo or regular mayo, but that's not plant-based. So we're going to make our own mayo. We do a full cup of raw cashews. I don't have these soaked. It's totally fine. It doesn't matter that much. We're doing just a full cup of these. This is, again, raw cashews, not salted, not roasted or toasted, just the raw. Putting them into, ooh, that was loud, sorry, into our container. Then we add in three dates. So these dates have already had the pits removed. Dates going in there. I bought these from Trader Joe's as well. I usually break them up in half just to give the blender a little head start. Then we'll add in a half cup of water, which I so wonderfully already measured out for us. We've got two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. There we go, I squeezed that already. And then we add in uh, apple cider vinegar. I didn't measure this one. I have Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Doesn't really matter what brand you have, any apple cider vinegar will do. We're adding in two tablespoons of this. Good. And finally, we will add in our salt. So another quarter teaspoon of our salt goes into this. I don't think you can see, I think it's right outside the camera frame, but the one of the cats is sitting right there. <laughs> so he's going to panic when I turn the blender on. So into this blender, this is a Nutribullet. If you have a regular blender, that's totally fine. Whatever blender you wanna use, into the container. We're going to let it run for several seconds to get it really broken down. Um, Turn off your sound if it gets too loud, okay? Here we go.
up good. It doesn't take too long. We just want to make sure that we break up the cashews. So you can see it's, oh, there we go, somewhat liquidy, kind of thick. We want to get the cashews broken down as well as the dates broken down. Um, next, we are going to add this into our mixture that we've already made. The last thing we do is add the potatoes because we don't want to stir those around too much because they can break down. They're much more delicate than celery or pickles, of course. So we wait until the very end to mix those around. I'll show you a closer view of this mayo so you can kind of see the consistency. So this is what our mayo looks like. Okay, all of this goes in. So I do have it um, written in the recipe as a cup and a quarter cashew mayonnaise. Lucky for us, the recipe makes a cup and a quarter. Add all of it in, makes it so much easier. You could just make this cashew mayo for using as mayo if you wanted to. I find that it does complement this recipe very nicely. The dates are um, an, an interesting ingredient for mayo, I think, but because there's so much pickle, sour type of ingredients in this recipe, I really like the slightly sweet addition of the dates. Um, it makes it kind of a nice hint of sweet against all the other flavors. So we've got that in our bowl. There we go. And I'm just gonna give this a stir around. So this is a recipe that you could make a day in advance if you wanted to. It works pretty well for that. Just keep it stored in an airtight container in the fridge. So this is what we have so far. Okay, decently liquidy. And then for our final step with this, and I'm gonna knock that over, we'll add our potatoes. This was two pounds of potatoes. Um, I do use the red potatoes. They have a decently soft skin. So as I said, you don't have to skin these ones. Um, two pounds of potatoes cut up and cooked. For me, it took 12 small to medium sized potatoes to make this amount. There we go. Get this out of our way too. Um, make sure that you do wait until your potatoes are most of the way cooled down. Um, mine are slightly warm. It's not that big of a deal. Just, they don't want, they, you don't want them to be steaming, putting them right into the mixture. So very gently, we're going to toss this. Some of the potatoes will break down a little bit, but the goal is to keep them mostly intact. So scooping down from the bottom to get our sauce all the way through and on top. If you wanted to, um, you'll notice in the directions, it does have optional uh, black pepper that you could add it to either one or the other, or both, of the sauce or the um, mixture itself. I've made it both ways. I don't like that much black pepper. I am apparently a very sensitive eater, so the black pepper kind of bothers my throat, my mouth. But if you like black pepper, the instructions are included there for black pepper, just a quarter teaspoon would do it. All right, we're fully mixed. I'll grab my plate. If you want as well to make it pretty, you can add paprika on top. Smoked paprika is kind of nice uh, for this recipe as well. It gives a little extra um, flavor to this, something just different. Uh, I get smoked paprika from Trader Joe's actually. This is just regular paprika. So here we have our potato salad. 
I'll put a little paprika on top to make it pretty, if you can see it. So here is our finished result, potato salad. Whoops. There we go. Our potato salad, it looks like potato salad, it tastes like potato salad, and yet it is totally made with plant-based things. This will probably be lunch and or dinner. I'm going to set this aside now and we will move on to finishing up our cookies. Did you forget about those? We haven't finished them yet. Let me get my recipe back. Got our cookie recipe and where'd my tray go? Here's the rest of our cookie things. So, our dough has definitely been in the fridge long enough. It's been at least 10 minutes at this point. Uh, in the instructions, you'll see that you need to have an additional half cup of sugar, more of a coarse sugar, to roll the cookies in. I typically use, I don't think you'll be able to see this. I typically use Trader Joe's brand. I, their sugar is more coarse, and I find that it does a really nice job on these cookies as a coating. Let me grab our dough. At this point, it is a little bit more firm, which makes it much easier to work with. As you'll notice in the directions, we are rolling it into balls and then rolling it into the sugar, so it helps if it's not like a really soft dough. The refrigerator helps us with that. I use a cookie scoop for this part of making cookies. This is one and a half tablespoons. That's what this is. I don't even know what brand this is anymore. I've had it for so long. One and a half tablespoons. It's a decently standard sized cookie scoop. So we scoop some into our cookie scoop. Roll it into somewhat of of a ball and then into our sugar. So I like to get all of it totally coated and then onto the cookie sheet. Uh, we don't press these cookies down. They will spread on their own in the oven. Uh, so because of that, you wanna make sure that you do space them apart appropriately so that they have room to spread when they do. I'll show you the finished cookies, how big they get in just a moment. I'll do just a few more of these so you can get the idea. So fully, oops, this is a lot harder in gloves. Fully coated in the sugar. You can see that. It makes them nice and glittery when they're all baked to have the sugar coating on them. These are great at holiday time too. They make really pretty cookies for the holidays. But to be honest, they're good anytime. <laughs> I'll do just two more on this cookie sheet and I'll pop it in the oven and show you what the finished results look like. You, uh, by the way, you will have leftover sugar in your bowl that you're coating the cookies with. Um, you don't need to use all of it. You should definitely have some left over. You just need a little bit more than you'll use. Otherwise, it's really difficult to coat the cookies. There we go. So I've got my six cookies here. This is what they look like right now. I'll pop these into the oven. minutes. What time is it now? Those will go for 12 minutes and then when you take them out they will actually be puffy so they won't look like the finished product when you take them out of the oven. They will be puffy still. Leave them on the tray on like a wire rack um, or on the counter if you want. Leave them on the tray for five to ten minutes. Usually I do about ten minutes. Leave them there until they've de-puffed they'll flatten out a bit um, to look like their finished result. Once they are cooled enough so they're not really soft, 
you can slide the parchment paper off onto a wire rack and then you should cool the cookies completely on the wire rack at that point. So our finished results, you can't really see those. These, they are soft cookies, by the way. They are chewy on the inside, a little crunchy on the outside, but they're decently soft overall. These are what are, oh, that's a cat. <laughs> These are what our cookies look like. I'll show you one more time now that the cat's gone. These are what the cookies look like. You can see the ginger, the sparkly sugar on these. Okay. I gave Andrea one of these this morning in our office and she gave it thumbs up. She said it was great. Um, again, one of my favorite recipes. <sighs> we finished, we've made it through both recipes. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed these and I hope you tried them out. Potato salad is great for the summer for socially distanced picnics as our cookies any time of the year. Um, and I also wanted to ask for those of you watching live or recorded later on, let me know if there's any specific recipes, foods, ingredients that you would like to see in these cooking classes. I would love to know what you would like to see. Otherwise, I'll just keep, keep making foods that I like. <laughs> all right, thank you all for watching again, and I will see you next time. Oh, can't reach. Bye.